Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to day 12 of Decktober. Today we're looking at the $50 Gishath Sun's Avatar deck tech. Gishath is a 7-6 dinosaur with trample, vigilance and haste that says when it deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards off the top of your library, putting any dinosaurs revealed straight onto the battlefield. This deck is all about ramping to the absolute max to get Gishaf out and attacking as soon as possible so you can get those huge dinosaurs onto the field for free then stomp all over your opponents for the victory with your big dino army. Now let's get straight into the budget deck tech. As always we're starting off with a ramp and for an expensive to cast commander there needs to be lots of ramp. First off we have Cultivate and Kadama's Reach to both search for two lands putting one onto the field tapped and the other into your hand. There is also Farseek to fetch you out a plains, mountain or forest and Rampant Growth to search for a basic land and put it onto the field tapped. We've added in Circuitous Root to put two basic lands onto the field tapped and Explosive Vegetation to do exactly the same. For yet another two basic land fetching sorcery we have Migration Path and Basswood Surge to search for two basic lands to enter the field tapped with that Kicker addition to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. We have Thunderherd Migration to get a basic land tapped, costing cheaper if you reveal a Dino card, and Pillar of Origins to have a mana of any Naya option to spend on Dino spells. We have some Mana Rocks in Arcane Signet to tap for any Naya colour, with Commander Sphere to do exactly the same, but also have as a secondary card draw option. And finally, we have Soul Ring. Because Soul Ring. Before we get onto the big bad Dinos, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for all things MTG. It's completely free to do and it helps our channel grow and grow as we head towards 2,000 subscribers. Now we're looking at our big bad dino army that we want to be getting out with Gishaf. Firstly though we're looking at Kahira the Orphan Guard which we're using as that trusty companion slot in this deck. By doing this we're making sure all of our deadly dinos hit the board with a plus one plus one counter and vigilance. But talking dinos, we're going straight to the biggest dinosaurs of them all with Itali Primal Storm that when attacked you exile the top card of each player's library, you may then cast those cards without paying their mana costs. And Galta Primal Hunger, that big 12-12 with Trample. If you can get either of these out with that Gishaf trigger, then your opponents will be running for their lives. We've got Zetalpa Primal Storm, the big 4-8 with Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample and Indestructible. And there's Marauding Raptor to cheapen those creature casting spells by 1. And whenever another creature ETBs under your control, Marauding Raptor deals 2 damage to it. And when it deals damage to one of your dinos, it gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. There is Quartz Wood Crasher, another trampling dino that says whenever one or more of your creatures with trample deals combat damage to a player, create an XX dinosaur token with trample where X is the amount of damage those creatures dealt to that player. And there's Regisaur Alpha to give all of our dinos haste and it ETBs and creates a 3-3 dinosaur token with trample. We've added in Majestic Helioptorus, a flyer that when attacked you can give another dinosaur flying and Colossal Dreadmore, the goodest 6-6 trample dino boy. There's Territorial Hammer Skull that when it attacks you may tap a creature an opponent controls and Kinjali Sunwing that says creatures your opponent control enter tapped. We've also added in Charging Tuscadon, another trample loving dino that when it does combat damage to a player it deals double that damage instead and Goring Ceratops, a double striker that when attacks gives all of your creatures double strike until end of turn. There's Annoyed Ultasaur with Reach, Trample and Cascade and Titanoth Rex, an 11-11 with Trample that you may cycle to give another creature a trample counter. From Ixlan there's Wakening Sun's Avatar that if you cast from your hand destroy all non-dino creatures, that is a one-sided board wipe right there. And Runic Armasaur that whenever an opponent activates an ability of a creature or land that isn't a mana ability, draw a card. We have Ranging Raptors that whenever it is dealt damage you can search for a basic land and put it onto the field tapped. And Verdant Sun's Avatar that whenever it or another creature ETBs under your control, you gain life equal to its toughness. There is Sky Terror with Flying and Menace and we've got Thrashing Brontodon as that artifact or enchantment removal option. There is Temple Ultasaur to prevent all but one of that damage and Shifting Ceratops, an uncounterable pro blue dino that you can give reach, trample or haste until end of turn. Finally, we have Raging Regisaur that when attacks pings one damage to any target and Taurian Mauler, a changeling that gets a plus one plus one counter whenever an opponent casts a spell. Now we're going to look at all the recursion in this budget brew. We want to add plenty of recursion as we want many ways to bring Kahira back to keep our creatures boosted and vigilant. First up we have Reborn Hope to return target multicolored card from the graveyard to your hand and Regrowth to return target card from the graveyard to your hand. 
There is Revive to return target green card from your graveyard to your hand, and Road of Return to return target permanent from the graveyard to your hand. And finally, there is Naya Charm to once more return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Cards like these are also essential for Gisha, as it's such a powerful commander, it will most likely have lots of targeted removal against it, so sooner rather than later, it may actually become cheaper to get out of the graveyard than the command zone. Before we get onto the lands, we're looking at the removal, card draw and the best of the rest in this dino budget brew. First up is Siege Behemoth, a beast that will gain from Kahira's abilities and when it attacks gives all your other attacking dinos unblockable. And Unbreakable Formation to give your creatures indestructible until end of turn, also giving them plus one plus one and vigilance if you cast the instant during your main phase. For some big finishers we have Overwhelming Stampede to give your creatures plus X plus X where X is the greatest power among creatures you control and Dinosaur Stampede to give your attacking creatures plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn with your dinos also gaining trample. We've added in Titanic Automatum to give your creatures plus 5 plus 5, First Strike, Trample and Lifelink until end of turn and for a big board wipe option we've got Star of Extinction to destroy target land and have it deal 20 damage to each creature and planeswalker. We basically added this into the deck because the art perfectly fits the theme. We've got Broken Bond for some artifact or enchantment removal with that added ramp option too and Primal Might to give target creature you control plus X plus X then fight target creature you don't control. For more ferocious fighters we've got Savage Stomp to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, it then fights another target creature you don't control, with it costing two less if you control a dinosaur. Having these sort of fighty removal options in a deck are perfect as on average dinosaurs and MTG are much stronger than the average creature, so having ways to boost them up and then remove the board is a double win. From Ikoria there is Ram Through to have target creature you control deal damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control with any excess damage going through to the creature's controller if that creature had trample. And Warstorm Surge, an enchantment that says whenever a creature you control ETBs it deals damage equal to its power to any target. That is potentially huge. There is Blood Mist that at the start of combat on your turn target creature you control gets double strike until end of turn and Duelist's Heritage that says whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attacking creature gain double strike until end of turn. Onto the card draw we have Colossal Majesty, that at the beginning of your upkeep if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, draw a card, and Elemental Bond to draw you a card whenever a creature you control with power 3 or greater enters the battlefield. There is Garrick's Uprising to draw you a card if it ETBs and you control a creature with power 4 or greater, this card also gives all of your creatures trample and continues drawing cards whenever a creature you control with power of 4 or greater hits your side of the field. And we have Return of the Wild Speaker to draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. For the final three cards we have Lifecrafter's Bestiary to scroll one on your upkeep and have as a card draw option whenever you cast a creature spell, if you pay the mana. And Sajiri Shelter to give a creature you control protection from the colour of your choice until end of turn. Lastly, we have Commune with Dinosaurs to look at the top 5 cards of your library, revealing a dino or land and putting that straight into your hand. Now we're looking at all the lands in this budget deck tech and starting off with the basics here, we are rocking 13 Forest, 6 Plains and 6 Mountain. There is Command Tower and Exotic Orchard for some mana fixing options and Commander Classics, Evolving Worlds and Terramorphic Expanse to sack and fetch out a basic land tapped. We've also snuck in Access Tunnel and Rogue's Passage to give us some scary unblockable dino action and there is Jungle Shrine to add any Naya colour option and Path of Ancestry to give us a scrying option whenever we use this land to cast those dino spells. For some bounce lands we have Boros Garrison and Gruul Turf to give us 2 mana and finally there is Selesnya Sanctuary to complete the 3 coloured bounce trifecta. Galta is an extremely powerful option in Commander and an extremely hard engine to stop once you get it out and it starts doing some big damage on the board. Make sure to check out Day 13 of Decktober tomorrow where we'll be looking at yet another new Commander option from Innistrad Midnight Hunt. There we have it, that is the $50 budget Gishath Sun's Avatar deck tech. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for all things MTG. Check out our link tree in the description below for all of our social media and affiliate links. For now though, I'm all tapped out. So I'll see you in the next video.